It's late again. Oh. Hello. Oh. Right. Today we're going to learn some suffixes, okay, Isabel? So here's the first one. Have you seen this one before? Hood. I've seen it. You've seen mm -hmm. it, yes? Yeah. A ver, ¿tú no has visto Caperucita Roja? That's Little Red Riding Hood. So hood is capucha, isn't it? That's the red hood. But, but I'm talking about the suffix hood. Look, let, let me give you an example, okay? Here's an example for you. Have you seen this word? Oh, yeah. Neighbor. The yes. neighbor. El vecino. You take neighbor, you add right. hood, and mm -hmm. what do you get? Vecino capucha. Mm, that doesn't make any sense. Sorry. It's not capucha, okay? Just forget that word. Okay. It's not capucha. Just remove that what from your it, head. What is it then? It's a suffix. Hi students! ¿Quieres hacer magia y aumentar tu vocabulario aprendiendo algunos de los sufijos más importantes del inglés? That sounds like my cup of tea. Let's begin. All right then, students. Let's have a look at the first phrase and let's see if you can tell me which suffix is needed here. What do you think, Isabel? Aquí necesitamos un adjetivo, ¿verdad? Act your age and stop being so... Quieres decir que alguien es infantil o inmaduro, ¿no? Yes. The correct answer is act your age and stop being so childish. Mm -hmm. El sufijo ish en inglés se puede añadir a algunos sustantivos para crear adjetivos como niño, child, infantil, childish. O otros ejemplos. I know one. Yes. ¿Cómo se dice un tonto? Ah, yes. A fool. A fool. Ok. Entonces, ¿cómo dirías? Estúpido. Foolish. Good. Fiebre es fever. ¿Y que alguien está febril? He or she is feverish. Feverish. Mm. Feverish. ¿Cómo se dice estilo? Style. Mm -hmm. Me gusta tu estilo, Mr. Barlett. Thank I you. like your style. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Entonces, ¿cómo dirías? Philip es muy estiloso. Philip is very stylish. Stylish. Thank you. And you are very stylish. Oh, thank you. Ok. Ahora, ¿cómo se dice uno mismo? Self. ¿Cómo dirías que alguien es egoísta? Dirías selfish. He is selfish. He's only thinking of himself. Ok. Y hay algo que he escuchado muchísimas veces, que vas a escuchar en inglés informal con este sufijo, y es que mucha gente a la hora de decir la hora, hmm. cuando no quieren concretar, te dicen Let's meet around 8-ish. It's a very common way to say approximately 8 o'clock. Another example would be Have you finished your work? Mm -hmm. Ish. Or how old is oh. the queen? She's 90-ish, I think. Ok, vale, ok. Cuando, cuando quieres decir aproximadamente, ¿no? Cuando no estás seguro. Ok, so yeah. the queen is 90-ish. Yeah. Let's see what's next. Ooh. Oh, yes, this is a good one. Ok, very common. What would you put in this gap? David was kicked out of class for behaving child... Infantilmente, inmaduramente, yes. ¿no? Mmm, ok. ¿Te acuerdas cuál es el sufijo que equivale a mente en inglés? It's Lee. Lee. So David was kicked out of class for behaving childishly. Childishly. De manera infantil. Yes. Good. Entonces, ¿cómo se usa Lee? Pues se usa para cambiar de adjetivo o sustantivo a adverbio. Right. Can we have some practice? Otros ejemplos. Feliz en inglés. Happy. Felizmente. Happily. Absolutamente. Absolutely. Hombre. A man. You're a man. Yes. And varonil. Varonil, no. Varonil. Varonil. <laughs> pues esta no la sabía, pero supongo que es manly. Manly. Oh, you're so manly, Mr. Barnett. I cannot concentrate. Mess in English? Month. 
month. Month. Month. Y mensualmente. Monthly. Good. Good. Really useful one. Okay, students. Next phrase. ¿Cuál es el sufijo que necesitamos en este hueco? This bottle of bleach has a child lid. Lid. Lid es una tapa, un tapón. Yes. Bleach es lejía, ¿no? Mm-hmm. Isabel, look, I just, I can't open this bleach. I don't know what, what's wrong with it, but I just can't open okay. it. I'm trying to clean, I'm trying to clean the bathroom. Well, I'm sure it's not rocket science. Look, you need to press here and then you turn it to the left. And that's it. That's what I did. I d it's a childproof lead. It's not rocket science, come on. Right, make sure that toilet is spotless. I will be checking it. Esta botella de lejía tiene un tapón a prueba de niños. Child proof. You could have a child proof lid. You could have a child proof drawer. Otros ejemplos, como dirías? Bala in English. Bala in English? Bullet. Bullet. Y un chaleco a prueba de balas. Bueno, antibalas ya yeah, en inglés. A prueba de balas, ¿no? So, a bulletproof vest. A bulletproof vest. That's it. ¿Qué más cosas tenemos a prueba de algo? Por ejemplo, se me ocurre un traje de bombero. Es un traje ignífugo. This is quite advanced for you. A prueba de fuego. ¿Cómo se diría? A fireproof suit. Fireproof suit. Ok. Otra cosa, algo que nos encantaría tener en Amigos Ingleses, porque muchas veces escuchamos el ascensor, el vecino que ha venido de la compra, nos encantaría tener una habitación insonorizada. A soundproof room. Soundproof room. That's one of my dreams. Ok, next phrase. What have we got? Jessica spent her child hmm, in France. Su niñez, ¿no? Su infancia. Este ya lo hemos visto, ¿eh? Jessica spent her childhood in France. That's it. Yes. So, hood muchas veces se traduce al español como dad. So, por ejemplo, madre. Mother. Maternidad. Motherhood. Or fatherhood. Parenthood. Mm -hmm. Brotherhood. Sisterhood. Ah, hermandad. ¿Cómo se dice? Probable. Probable. Likely. No? Likely. Y probabilidad. You could say probability. Mm -hmm. Or you could say like... Likelihood. Did you know that the likelihood of you winning the lottery is far lower than the likelihood that you will be struck by lightning? Have you ever been struck by lightning? I've been struck by lightning twice. That's what I thought. Now I understand many, many things. Okay, and por último, ¿qué pondríamos en este hueco? Mary enjoys the freedom of being single and child. No tiene hijos, entonces child no tiene... Less? Childless. So, other examples with less, we have miedo. Fear. Mm. Sin miedo. Fearless. Incansable. Tireless. Good. Those are good ones. Sin cuidado. Careless. Careless. Sin Careful. dientes. Oh, that's not good. Toothless. Oh. Well, my grandma is toothless. Any problem for that? No, no. It's fine. And oh. esperanza in English is hope. Sin esperanza. Hopeless. Dolor es. Pain. Indoloro. Painless. Painless. Como aprender inglés con amigos ingleses. It's painless. Hopefully. Those ones were really useful. Any examples? For example, after failing her driving test five times, Maria was beginning to feel a little hopeless. Give me one with careless. Careless. Let me think. My mother is a very careless driver. Oh, she's a danger. 
She's a danger to society. <laughs> What about painless as well? Can you give us an example with painless? Mm -hmm. Yeah. For example, when you're going to do an analysis of the sangre, no? Give me your arm. Close your hand. Don't worry, it's going to be completely painless. No, 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 no. Ah! We haven't started yet. Oh. Si quieres aprender más sufijos en inglés, recuerda que tenemos el test completo y un montón de sufijos más en el blog, allí, en el blog de Amigos Ingleses, el mejor blog para aprender inglés del mundo. Uh, probably, probably. Yes, that is. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. We hope you found this useful. If you did, why not leave this video a like, subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you very soon with more English classes. See you soon, students. Take care. Cheerio. Bye. Bye. Prefixes here.